Hey everyone! Welcome to a really, really belated to be played. These are episodes in which we talk about the games that we are going to play, try to play, hopefully play, and sometimes review during the following month. Now, we didn't do one last month because of life reasons, lots going on, but we are catching up now. So we're gonna go back to March and look at the games that we had said we would play during the month of March, and then we're gonna pretend that April didn't really happen, and we're gonna move on right to May. Let's start off by looking at our March recap. First is City of Kings. This was our March indie spotlight game, and oddly, we didn't play this one. Normally, we always play our indie spotlight games, but because of some logistic shipping issues, we didn't actually get a copy of this. They are running another Kickstarter now for a reprint, so if you are interested in it, you can get in on that. Now, City of Kings is a very, very open-ended game. They kind of tout it as no matter when you play or how many times you play, there's something like 10,000 encounters in the game. You're never going to see it all. So we are still hoping to play it at some point, but unfortunately we weren't able to get it in during the month of March or April. But I will say I'm going to give us a point here anyway, because we did play our April Indie Spotlight, which was Feudum. Feudum is another really open-ended game. You had you can get points for pretty much anything. The whole idea is that you're moving around a map, building up these settlements and participating in different guilds. The guilds all interact with each other in interesting ways. And I know for me, like this was definitely a game where I did not understand what I was doing for like the first half of the game. But after that, it started to click. And I know other players have the same experience. So if you do play Feudum, just, just be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be loving. You will get there. Next is Santa Maria. This is kind of a medium weight Euro game about developing a colony. Now you use dice as workers to activate different buildings, to do different things. There is some tile placement in it. We did play this one. Um, now this, it's a bit of a weird game because the theme is very conquistador, very, very colonial. And you know, it didn't need to be. Like, there's nothing in the game that would need to be that way. And there are some weird elements to it. Like, the conquistadors are just a gold track. And you win by getting happiness points from doing things. And the happiness points have, like, this creepy smile on it. So, overall, it's, like, a really solid game mechanically. But thematically, it kind of wigs people out. So I, I don't know what's going to happen with this in the grand scheme of things. I honestly don't see it doing super well long term in the current market, which is kind of too bad. I wish they had picked almost any other theme for such a mechanically great game. Keeper. Keeper is next. It is the next in the series of key games, you know, the key flower titles where they name everything key. Like, you don't have Meeple, you have Keeple. I don't get it. It's fine. A lot of people really, really love these games, but Keeper seems to be kind of polarizing. So you, in this game, what makes it different from all of the other worker placement key games is when you place your Keeple, Meeple guy, little wooden thing, on the central board, other players, if they have one of the same color, can join in. So there's more interaction here than there is in a lot of these similar um, action selection or worker placement games. Unfortunately, we weren't able to play this one over the past couple of months, so I don't know where I personally stand on it. I know that I'm generally not a huge fan of the key series. I just... I don't know, it's just never really like done it for me. But I know that people I really respect and whose game opinions I value love it. So, you know, your mileage may vary. 
Cosmogenesis is a game about creating the cosmos. You are playing as these giant solar systems. You crash planets together to get the building blocks for stars and for all of these other amazing things. And as time goes on, you might even be able to create life itself. So that's like really cool, but also pretty intimidating. And we actually, we didn't get to play this one either. I'm going to explain why in a minute though. I have like a really good excuse. <laughs> the North Sea Trilogy. So this is Shipwrights of the North Sea, Raiders of the North Sea, and Explorers of the North Sea. Not necessarily, but maybe in that order. All put together. So they're a series of games, right? But there's a way you can bind them together into like, like basically this one epic, really long, really complicated, involved game that takes almost a whole day to play. We did this. Well, Ryan did this. It was the Granite Game Summit in March, and that is one of the local game conventions put on here. It's a couple days of just straight gaming. It's a lot of fun, and we spent pretty much a whole morning into afternoon doing this one thing. We also played a lot of other games there, but we were playing kind of games that we couldn't play at home. So not a lot of the things that I'm talking about here because we can play those at any point. We were trying to play games that we didn't actually own. But we played North Sea and I feel like this should count as three points. I'm not gonna actually give ourselves three points for it, but I, I could make that argument. Finally, our card pull game of March. So that's where we shuffle a deck of cards that all have a game written on them. And the game that we pull is one that we try to play and talk about or review or at least cover a little bit on our site during that month or shortly thereafter. That explanation has gotten like longer and longer the more we've done this because I realize how many caveats I have to add in there to make it make sense. Our card pull was Battle Merchants New Kingdoms, and we did play this. It's a little expansion to Battle Merchants, I guess not super little, but it adds a New Kingdom deck. It gives you some additional strategic options, but it doesn't change the game too, too much. In case you haven't played it, Battle Merchants is a game where you are a fantasy arms dealer. You're crafting these weapons and you're selling them to the different warring factions across the kingdom. Now, it's kind of unpleasant, but it's also kind of fun to be like the back, like you're the NPC, you know, you are the economy supporting this giant fantasy war that you always play and that you always read about in any sort of fantasy genre thing. Now, I really love that and I like Battle Merchants. I think it's a fun game. I didn't actually get to play the expansion Ryan played with some friends of ours, but I'm gonna try it and it seems like one of those expansions that's fairly easy to just add in and you just leave it in. Like you don't really need to, it's not one where you're gonna choose every game, what do we play with, like you'll just leave this one in. So I'm sure that I will be playing it very very soon. So overall that's four out of six. If you count Feudum instead of City of Kings, which I am because we would have played City of Kings if we have gotten it and we did play Feudum, which was our indie spotlight game. Did you follow that? All right, four out of six, not too shabby. Let's not talk about how we had two months to do four out of six. Let's just move on to what we're going to play in the month of May. May is kind of a busy month for us. In addition to all our normal stuff, we're going on a pretty big vacation to the Mediterranean and Europe. So we thought it would be kind of fun if instead of just picking a bunch of games kind of randomly from our collection, from what we've gotten in recently, we picked them thematically. So I am going to present to you our May to be played, which is themed games that take place in the Mediterranean and or Europe, mostly the Mediterranean. First is Favor of the Pharaoh, which obviously takes place in Egypt. It's an engine building game that uses dice. Every round, players are trying to collect more dice and the game is actually won or lost by a roll-off at the end. Now, there 
is a lot of dice mitigation involved. You can manipulate things, you can collect extra powers, but when it comes down to it, it is a roll off and I don't actually know how much luck is really involved. I personally don't mind kind of high luck games. They don't really bother me. Arkham's my favorite and that's like a dice fest, but I know that this does turn off a lot of people. So we're probably gonna be after we're probably going to have to be a little bit careful about who we play it with, but I'm looking forward to it. Liguria is a prequel to the game Fresco. Now in Fresco, you are in charge of creating the beautiful frescoes that you see all across Mediterranean art. In Liguria, you are in charge of importing the dye that is used to create the paints that are used in Fresco. See what happened? Now you have to travel all over to different port cities and try to acquire the best colors, the most varied colors, and while also doing a little bit of like conquering and a little bit of diplomacy, I don't know how those all fit in thematically with buying essentially paint, but I'm sure that it works and I really like Fresco. We once made a mistake with Fresco. We played all of the big box expansions all at once and I will never do that again. But if you just play Fresco with like a couple of the expansions at a time, it's a really great experience and I am excited to go and find the origins of all of those beautiful colors. Istanbul is next. This is a worker placement market game. But the catch, why it's different from every other worker placement game, is that you have a whole group of workers. You have one boss worker and you have a bunch of little apprentice workers. Whenever you want to take an action as you're moving through this marketplace, you have to leave one of your apprentices behind. They have to work out like the details of your deal. If you want to get them again, so if you run out of workers and need to use them again later on, you need to go back to that spot and get them. They can't just come find you. They are under strict orders not to wander around. I am so bad at like market games, but I'm so good at worker placement games. And I'm really curious about which one this becomes for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm just intrigued by how this works. It, the descriptors make it seem like you really do have to plan your moves well in advance, which is not always my strongest thing. It's usually, that's more like a Ryan thing than an Aaron thing, but I, I think I can do it. I'm going to really try. And finally, let's build a city. In Valletta, you are building the capital city of Malta. You are laying down foundation, you are hiring workers, you're doing all of those classic city building things. And to be honest, having not played this game, I don't know too much more about it. The descriptions are pretty vague and it feels pretty Euro-y where you get points for like a lot of different things and <laughs> In researching this episode, I discovered that the primary difference between quote unquote Ameritrash games and Euro games isn't the gameplay. It's the way the gameplay is described on BoardGameGeek.com. If you look at an Ameritrash game on BoardGameGeek, it's like three paragraphs of like game fanfic describing what your player's doing and then like a close-up image of all the dice and then like one little paragraph about mechanics and if you look at a euro game on bgg it's like four paragraphs that aren't even really sentences just listing components and so i know every single thing that is in that box all right but i don't know how it all comes together all i know is that you use it to build the city and it looked really fun. <laughs> Our replay game this month, we decided to get a little meta with it. We are doing Expedition Famous Explorers. This is a game about traveling all over the world. You have to branch out along these different paths, trying to explore the farthest and get the most glory. 
we played it before and it was really fun although the little wooden like bits that you have to use to chart your course can be a little finicky but that that's kind of beside the point that's just that's really only a problem if you have a cat like we do who likes to jump on the table anyway we thought that was kind of a cute way of wrapping all of these together and embracing the travel theme we also decided that we weren't going to be doing a card pull game this month i just know realistically timing being what it is we're not going to get to it so that is our travel themed to be played for may so go ahead and leave a comment down below if there are any games you're hoping to get to the table in may or if you have any tips for traveling around the mediterranean or if you have any mediterranean themed games or if you have any games that you think would really fit well in a suitcase that's going to go travel around the Mediterranean. I don't care. We'll take all of your advice. So yeah, leave a comment and also like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. We really appreciate it. And doing that helps get the video out there so that more people can see it. We'll be back again really, really soon with another video for you. Bye.